Hello, friends, and welcome to the second episode of Joy of Exile, where I share with you the fun things that I like to do in Path of Exile and try to spark inspiration and just recapturing that joy of that first time you booted up the game and had a ton of fun. So today's episode is about what I've been slacking making videos for y'all <laughs> doing because it's just been so darn fun. You know, juiced maps traditionally in PoE are a little bit inaccessible to the casual player, but with the new Atlas passives, you can have semi-juiced maps just for free. Elk and Go and you're getting Beyond and Delirium on most of your maps just right away. And with a little bit of investment, just very, very little, especially with how cheap Scarabs are, assuming that we have decent builds, we can actually do maps that are just as hard as those big, expensive, rich, juicy boys in the past. And I just absolutely love that aspect of the game now becoming more accessible to those power dad and mom gamers out there. So what is a juiced map? Juiced map basically just means get as many monsters and get as much quantity of item drops as possible on that map and dramatically increase your chances of getting good loot drops. It's a very simple concept, but it does raise the difficulty of the map, so you do need a decent build to do it. But especially with the new way that the Atlas is set up, it's quite accessible because we can run maps at T10, T11, T12, instead of always having to do T16, but you can just drop in those void stones and do T16 if you want to. So as always, let's open up with some gameplay and some discussion about what I'm doing. So as you know, I have been a pretty staunch supporter of being a strongbox gamer. Much to my chagrin, after some discussion with my friends and some critical thinking, I realized that the return on investment, considering the investment on the passive points of the tree, is probably not really worth it at this point. Why is that? If you look at the way the economy works, we got supply, we got demand. The supply for how easy strongbox gaming and essence gaming is just absolutely tanks the price. There's so much out there that no one is even buying from anyone else. If you want essences or scarabs from strong boxes, you just spec into those in the Atlas and you have access to them. I do believe that that is a strong, healthy thing for the economy. More choice for crafting, more access to scarabs and all of that. However, if you're trying to make profit and be able to craft up bigger items, we have to kind of go a little off of the meta here. And that's a very simple thing that you can do to always reevaluate your strategy. If 95% of people are doing that strategy. Look at what the other things are that they aren't doing. There is a huge array of things that folks are not really tapping into that I would encourage you to just poke around on the Atlas and see what feels good to you. So my primary strategy right now that I went into, and I don't think that this is actually ideal for profit whatsoever, but it is ideal for fun for me. And that's what I'm really aiming for here. And I'm having an absolute blast doing. So what I did is I spec into all of the Beyond nodes and some of the Searing Exarch nodes here. Between Torn Veil and Scent of Blood, I actually have access to a baby version of Beyond on every single map that I'm running. And then on top of that, with Fiendish Opulence, those Beyond Demons will drop additional basic currency items. That's kind of a baby version of like Nemesis 3, right? It's like kind of like Nemesis 0.5. And on top of that, what we can do is roll Beyond on our maps and then use Beyond on the map device for kind of a pseudo 2.5x beyond on the map. In addition to the increased pack size for the Searing Exarch stuff, just guarantees that there will be a lot of monsters, a lot of beyond monsters, and additional currency that you normally wouldn't find. Just by hunting a little bit for beyond on your map, you're gonna have a lot of rares and a lot of beyond bosses that just drop raw currency and decent items across the board. It is a great way to shore up the baseline drops of your map without really having to invest too much. In addition to that, I am slightly invested into Delirium. I just want more chance for me to find those mirrors and get a little bonus for what I might get dropping there. I am specced into some kind of fun and silly things right now. Areas have a 10% chance to contain a bounty target pack. That <laughs> This is actually, I, I couldn't stop laughing last night. I was running a fields map and there was one of the giant dogs from Heist walking around the map. And uh, it just absolutely struck me by surprise. I was a little delirious from, from lack of sleep. And I laughed for like a solid five minutes. Just like you see this giant dog in the middle of all the packs and it, uh, it absolutely killed me. This thing will drop multiple thousands of rogue markers and rogue markers sell for quite a bit right now actually. Because no one is doing Heist, rogue markers actually sell for a lot already off the baseline. And if you are interested in Heist, this will give you enough rogue markers that you kind of don't even have to think about it anymore. So really, really nice nodes. Is it worth the amount of points that I have invested? Probably not, but it's just fun and it brings joy, so I don't regret using it. Other than that, I'm just invested in the Harbinger stuff. Lots of Harbies on the map, especially the powerful Harbinger bosses. I, <laughs> Me and my friends have been calling them the King Daddies. 
Um, they're just really, really nice for incredible quant. Now, I've seen a lot of folks complaining that harbingers just don't feel like they're worth it. And I don't think they're accurately tallying up what they're getting. I would say that I'm quite easily averaging 5 to 10 chaos profit a map just by running a polished Harbinger Scarab every single map, which is effectively free right now with the tanked price of these Scarabs. And just having that essentially for free on every map, not to mention the amount of monsters and extra quantity that we're getting, is absolutely worth it in my opinion for a nice casual bonus to the drops that you get when you're mapping. And then what I'm doing is I roll some nice sextants on my Void Stones. I do highly recommend if you are capable of running T16 maps, getting those four Void Stones ASAP, extra sextants, extra quantity, is just a great bonus to all of your maps. You're definitely missing out if you're not doing four sextants every single map that you can. And then as you can see, I have favorited Cemetery across the board. Cemetery has been one of my favorite maps for a very long time, even before they added Brother Stash. But now with Brother Stash in there, the five exalt div card is kind of just a no brainer. Very, very easy layout, very, very easy boss. Really nice map to run. Had to put the headphones on because we're about to do some gameplay here. Then what I do is I take my map, I use my four chisels, I roll it up. I try very hard to hit beyond. I will chaos spam it. Absolutely worth looking at pack size in addition to item quantity. I think a lot of folks just look at the quant. And ideally, if you can get that number over 30, it's pretty good. Now, 100 quant and 31 pack size is really, really good. I do like this quite a bit. So here, I would just vol it and we're good to go. An alternative is I would just chaos spam it until I saw beyond specifically. Stacking beyond up to, you know, 2.5 times will give us way more quantity and way more drops than just really focusing on the raw quantity and pack size on the map. We don't want to roll too, too hard. The main idea is being able to get in those maps, killing the monsters. Every second that we spend rolling the maps and really putting too much effort into it is a second we're not killing monsters and getting those drops. I do have a map that is pre-rolled up already. This did have 100 plus quant. It had beyond on it. Then I evolved it and it went unidentified, which gives us even more quant. Then what I like to do is, depending on my mood, I will either run Fortune Favors the Brave. The reason I will do this is because I have Shaping the Valleys, 10% Quant, Rarity, and Pack Size by areas affected by Fortune Favors the Brave. This is just, why not, right? This is very, very good. You get a random one of these modifiers here. You know, the value of me getting Abyss versus getting Beyond could be, you know, sometimes you just want to force the thing that you want. In this case, since we already have Beyond on the map, I want to go double Beyond and really push that quantity. So we're going to run Beyond here. It does cost a couple more Chaos, but hopefully we're going to get that back. Then I like to use Searing Exarch primarily. The Eater of Worlds guys, uh, they're a little scary. Those, uh, those monsters that shoot those lightning projectiles, they have kind of shotgunned me off screen a couple of times, so I worry about those ones. The Searing Exarch guys, they have that burning tar stuff that people have been memeing about recently that does crazy, crazy damage. We just got to be careful not to click that burning ground modifier and we'll be okay. I have invested into the Searing Exarch nodes here and I kind of want to push that a little bit further. So I'm going to do Beyond Searing Exarch and then I do a Div Scarab because I just want more chances for Brother Stashes. Uh, haven't had one drop yet, but you know, we got to go for the gamble. Then I'm using a Polished Legion Scarab, a Polished Harbinger Scarab, and a Gilded Blight Scarab. This is just kind of what I had in the pool that gives us more quantity, more monsters but you can kind of mix and match and pick whatever you want. These are the scarabs that I've gotten just from doing Arch Nemesis, doing those operative strong boxes, and you can buy them very, very, very cheap. That's an example of just really, really high supply. Not that much demand because everyone, there's so much supply and people aren't using them probably as much as they could be. Just go out there, buy them for free, and you're good to go. Oh, fun little thing that you can do in addition, find scarabs that you don't really like, like Rusted Torment scarabs. You can sell them for two to one, with a one per for the Orb of Horizons. So two Scarabs and an Orb of Horizons. Sell it to the vendor and you'll get back five Tormented other Scarabs. Scarabs. Look at that. We just turned those Tormented Scarabs into Polished Blights. That's a very big upgrade. So definitely if you have a lot of Orbs of Horizon and those Scarabs, don't forget that recipe. That's a great way to convert crappy Scarabs into really, really good ones. All right, without further ado, let's kick off this map. All right, so just like the previous video, I'm using my Ice Nova Cast on Frostbolt Elementalist. I've done a few upgrades since the last video. I put about five more exalts into the build, bringing up to a total of really about 10 exalts invested. And I'm really, really happy with where this build is. Not to mention, it can do pretty juiced maps. As you'll see, I might die once in a while because I'm kind of pushing that limit there, but I'm absolutely enjoying this build. Definitely let me know in the comments below if you want me to go into a lot of detail about this build. This is some of the most fun I've had playing a build in a while. It's one of those builds that strikes that balance of being able to clear the full screen really nicely 
and decent single target. I'm actually over 6 million DPS right now, and it feels pretty good. So let's get into it. So this is just like, you'll see, if you roll up your maps, the number of monsters that you get is, uh, you know, it's just that really satisfying feeling and the reason why I play Path of Exile. You know, I, I want to remind you here that this entire map investment is like 10 chaos. In the past, to do something like this, especially with the price of scarabs and all that, we would be looking for significantly more than 10 chaos to get into this. And now it's kind of just free accessible to the average player. And it's just an absolute blast and I'm having so much fun with it. As you can see, this build is kind of like a, a lawnmower and we get this really nice balance of clear and single target. And the beyond bosses get super chilled and frozen and they're not as scary as they normally would be. <laughs> but we will end up with, oh, there was Abixoth right there. Pretty nice. All right, let's clear these guys out. Let's see, oh, let's do that one. So yeah, the, the big key thing here is that because we're killing so many monsters and so many beyond bosses, they're just going to be dropping so much stuff. <laughs> Too many beyond bosses on the screen at once will be a little rippy. Got to be a little bit careful here. All right, what do we got here? Scarabs duplicated? Yeah, sure. Oh, I already clicked on that one. I hope they fix that, uh, that altar bug pretty soon. That is a little bit annoying. Let's clear up the, uh, the Harbinger before we get into it. Ball Ice Nova, very satisfying. All right, let's do the Cassia here. Yeah, and these maps, they do take a while. So, uh, you know, definitely tuck in, grab a cup of coffee. <laughs> grab a cup of coffee, grab a banana, grab some pretzels. They take some time, but it's just so fun to go in there and get kind of just non-stop killing monsters, right? And the chance for good loot is just, it's very sustainable considering the amount of investment that you put in. Just, I've been having an absolute blast. I actually didn't even want to go to bed last night because I just kept doing this and uh, me and my friends were on Discord screen sharing with each other. Just laughing the whole time at the number of monsters we would get on the map. Um, you know, this, is, this isn't even uh, as high as I got, 137 quant. We had like 160 quant last night, and <laughs> the number of bosses were just, uh, it was overwhelming, but so much fun. Little Vault Ice Nova right there, very, very satisfying. Just clear the whole screen. Great, great skill. Having a lot of fun with just the buffed Ice Nova and the Frost Bolt here. They do pretty respectable damage, honestly. Sometimes the sound breaks because there's too much stuff going on. <laughs> Another Vol Ice Nova. Gotta get that effage out of the way. All right, there we go. I do still have one Strongbox node that guarantees you to get a Strongbox every single map. Uh, that one's actually pretty nice just to get a little bit guaranteed item quantity and number of monsters. Not the highest value, but it is worth a consideration to just leave that in as you unspec the strongbox nodes. Just to guarantee a couple extra monsters, a couple extra drops. I would consider leaving that one and the um, and the operatives. Just for, you know, that extra basic baseline number of scarabs that you might want to sustain. I believe actually last night that they fixed the blight opening maps. Uh, that was super, super bugged until yesterday. They said last night on Reddit that it's been fixed or at least mostly fixed. So consider specking into Blight. If you've, been, if you've been holding off running Blight just because it's bugged out, 
I think the price of Blight stuff might go up, especially Blighted maps, because people are now able to run them comfortably. So put that on your radar as well, if you're looking at something that's a little bit of an alternative from what you've been running the past week or so. And this is kind of the fun, exciting thing about getting into this new Atlas. I, I think it's going to be changing as people adapt to, oh, there's too much strong box, there's too much essence, we're going to move into other things. If too many people move into the other stuff, always keep it in the back of your mind like, hey, scarabs and essences are going up in price again because everyone moved over to a different strategy. So this is always dynamic and fluid. Double check the prices and always double check what is the most fun for you. Even if strong boxes are not particularly profitable compared to other strategies, it will just be more fun if you're running more maps and really enjoying that. That's where the real profit lies. All right, let's 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 try this uh, this Legion. Very satisfying with Vol Ice Nova. Let's see if we can get a, a good juicy one there. Oh, I think players have less AoE on this map, so a little bit hard to get that propagation. Now, legions, legions are an interesting one. They are actually not particularly profitable right now either. It's only about 30 chaos for a full Mariketh emblem right now. That's no big deal because they drop so much other stuff. They basically can drop items from across the board of everything in the game. So do consider just throwing in Legion Scarabs, even if you're not getting any profit or currency really from selling those emblems. It's still really, really good just to have that baseline of lots of quantity, lots of drops, lots of, you know, lots of fun stuff dropping. All right, Arch Nemesis. Oh man, I can't wait for them to update that UI. <laughs> e even I am, uh, I would say the least fun thing about 3.17 right now, which, you know, is, is great, right? Like, when the least fun thing is the UI being bad, that's a really good sign about the league. But this UI is rough, man. I, I do my best to keep it kind of organized. But, uh, yeah, it gets out of control right here. So let's just do a simple little recipe right here. I'm not going to do the big four-way. Ah, I think they've already... I think they're here, Envoy. <laughs> I don't think you gotta warn me about anything. There we go. A little nice ball ice nova right there. Yeah, my friend has taken to calling Essences uh, the new Parandus coins. <laughs> they are so depressed in value right now because the supply is just out of this world. But, you know what? It might just take a little bit of a meta shift, right? A content creator could make a video that says, hey, because there's so many essences in the market, we can now essence craft some crazy gear, right? And there might be some items that, you know, push the limit of what people are looking to craft. Like the expected, you know, the expected number of essences used to craft something might be in the multiple thousands. And in that case, that is that specific essence might be worth a lot of currency. So so don't write things off entirely. Leave them on the table. Pick up those essences when you see them because the price might just go up because of some, you know, little meta shift or something. So as you can see, the juice will flow in these maps. It is just, just, just constant monsters. Constant double beyond monsters. It's just a really fun time. Map boss, very, very easy. <laughs> Very, very easy. All right, and then back into the Crucible here. So yeah, I've always found, you know, Super Juice stuff kind of annoying to set up and run, but because we have it now fully accessible everywhere on the Atlas, we can kind of just hop in and uh, even a regular map that we run, we now have Beyond Monsters on it. We can double Beyond very, very easily for just five Chaos. And, you know, there's a good chance that you'll get decent drops and, and, and a really nice return there. When I'm ready and not All right. All right, what else do we got here? That is the thing about Beyond, is if you are always running forward, yeah, there we go. <laughs> There's a death. 
Yeah, the thing about Beyond is if you're always running forward, there's probably going to be monsters behind you. And so the, the clean way to deal with them is kind of take your time a little bit and not end up in a situation like I just was there. But uh, I kind of wanted to push it. I like to push that limit a little bit. And that's the fun for me. And that's why I like softcore for traditional playing is it lets me be comfortable really going kind of crazy and seeing how far I can push these maps with the uh, absolute insanity. And this is one of like the fun, notable things that Path of Exile, just this is, this is where a lot of that fun is. And this is to me, what kind of like, look at, look at this, right? The number of monsters. This is what defines to me why Path of Exile is such a special game of just being able to have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of monsters <laughs> on a single map and just keep clearing, keep killing, spawning bosses constantly. All right, nine monsters remain, eight monsters remain. That was pretty good. I just wanted to share with you all what I have found to be one of the most fun experiences in Path of Exile yet. Very, very juiced maps that even if your build can't handle it, sometimes you're gonna die once in a while. It's just really fun and kind of hilarious. For me, it captures that experience of how overwhelming and crazy PoE can be and just that joy of constant loot chops, even if they're not always super, super good, but just always having items drop, killing lots and lots of monsters. And to me, that's like the soul of what's really fun and exciting about Path of Exile. You know, the first time I played that old Triple Herald BV Elementalist and the whole screen just popped with that Herald device, I'm always trying to recapture that experience and that joy. And this really, to me, is the spiritual successor to that experience. And I've really, really enjoyed doing this the past couple of days. Is it the absolute most profitable thing? Definitely not, but is it just super, super fun and satisfying? Absolutely. So yeah, what is the most fun that you have in Path of Exile right now? Is it crafting? Is it heisting? Is it delving? Let me know in the comments below. I am really, really interested. I would love more ideas for more fun things to do. I always love to hear from you all. So anyway, I gotta go kill some more monsters. Don't forget to have fun and I'll see y'all next time. Goodbye.